Hello and welcome to Lecture 8 of Math 1B03. And today what we're going to be doing is looking at linear transformations. So a linear transformation is a particular function from Rn to Rm. And what we'll see is a connection between what are called matrix transformations and linear transformations. At the end of today's lecture, we're going to look at a connection between system to linear equations and linear transformations. Now, as we go through the lecture, you'll see that there's a connection between these two notions, matrix transformations and linear transformations. And as we'll go through, and I'll try to emphasize this, for some people, including many, many mathematicians, the study of linear algebra is really the study of linear transformations. And we'll become clear why some people may take that point of view as we go on in our lecture today. But we're going to start at the basics. We're going to start with what is a function between uh, um, Rn and Rm and talk about some of their properties and introduce each of these terms. Okay, so first of all, let's look at functions from Rn to Rm. I forgot my M there. And just recall that Rn is the set of all n tuples, uh, a set of all n tuples where each of the entries belong to R, right? So one way to think about this is this is all vectors in Rn. That's what we denote it. Now, what we're going to be interested in is looking at functions from Rn to Rm, so two different n spaces, an n space to an m space. But you already actually have some experience with this because in calculus, you, you spend a lot of time looking at functions from R to R, right? So we can think of that as a special case of going from R1 to R1. So as an example in calculus, these are functions that you may be looking at. f of x is equal to x squared, f of x is equal to 3 cos x, and so on. Okay, and we look at the derivative of these, integration, and so on. Now, what we're interested in is not so much functions that where the n and the m are both 1, but where we allow n and m to be any positive integer. And a transformation is just any function that takes uh, any vector over on this side, the Rn, to a vector on the other side, right? So a transformation is a rule that assigns to each vector x in the Rn exactly one vector onto the other side, Rm. And we use this notation Tx to mean the vector that we get after we plug it into the function. Now, there's a bunch of terminology related to functions, and some of this you may already be familiar with. We call Rn the domain of t. This is where the input of our function comes from, another way to think of what the domain is. The Rm is the codomain. is the codomain of t. So it's basically saying this is where the vectors get sent. This is where they live at the end of our, our transformation. And we say that if x is inside of Rn, we call t of x the image of the vector x. So t of x represents the image. And we talk about the range of t. And this will come up a number of times in today's lecture. So the range of t is now just the set of all vectors that you get after you plug every vector inside of Rn into your function. And this is a subset of all the, ve uh, all the vectors inside of Rn. Now, you may have seen some of this terminology in other contexts. This is kind of standard terminology about functions, uh, but we're just applying it to the special case that our functions are going from an n space to an m space. And I have an example uh, down below here of a transformation. So this is a transformation from R2, so two space to three space. And what it does is it takes a vector, a, a two tuple to a three tuple, right? So you can think about what's happening here is each vector in R2 is mapped 
to a vector in R3. So really we're giving a rule of how we take a vector on this side and mapping it to the vector on the other side. So for as a specific example, suppose that I wanted to know, well, where does the vector 1, 2 go? Well, it tells me that the vector 1, 2 should get sent to the following vector. I should send it to 1 squared plus 2. Uh, in the second coordinate, I just take the x2 still. And then the last coordinate, I should have 1 squared times 2 plus 2 cubed. And I do all my calculations. The first coordinate becomes 3. The second coordinate becomes 2. That's a multiplying there. So 1 squared times 2 plus 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is 8. So I get 10. Okay, so that gives me an example of a function from R2 to R3. Now, the interesting thing, and we're going to kind of examine this idea a little bit more fully in today's lecture, is that if you start with a matrix, if I start with a matrix A and it's an M by N matrix, we can use that matrix to define a transformation from Rn to Rm. Okay, so keep track of the order here. We have M rows and N columns, and that's going to define a transformation from Rn, where the N is corresponding to the columns, and the Rm, which is corresponding to the rows. And how does it work? Well, we're going to take a vector in Rn, and we're going to send it to a vector in Rm. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply the vector by the matrix A. Okay, and so just to make this a little bit clearer, our input is an n by 1 matrix and the output is an m by 1 matrix after we multiply it. So just to make this a little bit clearer, here I have a matrix and I have a 2 by th uh, 3 by 2 matrix and we're going to define A transformation from R3, or excuse me, that should be R2 because we have two rows, to R, uh, two columns to R3 because we have three rows, and we're going to define it in the following way: we're going to take a vector x1, x2, and I'm going to take that vector and I'm going to multiply it by the uh, matrix. Uh, a. So let me write that. There's my matrix A. I'm going to multiply it by x1, x2. And my output should be using the uh, matrix vector operation, uh, uh, multiplication operation. I get x1 plus 2x2. I get x2 in the second coordinate. And then I get negative x1 plus x2. So you could think this is how my transformation works. I take this vector x1, x2, and I map it to this vector right here. And we can think of that uh, operation as taking my vector and multiplying it by my matrix A. So in linear, al uh, linear algebra, we see matrices appear in numerous times. And matrices can be used to define maps from Rn to Rm. So we're going to give some names to some of these things in the next part of the lecture. But the key things here to take away from this first part is that there are transformations are mapped from one set of n space to an m space. Okay, I will see you in the next part.